Hello there, welcome back to another tutorial. I'm in my kitchen today for the very last painting of 2020. And uh, this scene, this kind of subject really kind of says something to me. I don't know what it is, um, but I'm going to show you what I have in store. It's just something simple. Uh, it's not a landscape, but it's something simple. Let me show you what we have here. So I have, uh, I'm painting in my kitchen today because it's quite chilly out in the studio. So I've my camcorder set up here, look. Um, and there is my canvas my paints now let's take a look at the subject it's a 16 by 12 canvas and it's a hand with a butterfly on the fingertips isn't that gorgeous and it's going to be a very kind of a rich green background on this some lovely shadows i think this is going to be a stunning tutorial um i just wanted to finish on something nice and light um this week so i hope you don't mind it um let's crack on and have a bit of fun with this i can't wait to paint this Thank you so much for everything and um, have a wonderful Christmas, okay? Enjoy the tutorial. Okay, here we go. Right, let's start painting this and get this looking very inviting. Now, there's the photograph. Isn't that beautiful? Very dark shadows down in the bottom here and a very kind of vignette sort of effect going around. I think that's wonderful. So I'm going to start now and let's crack on and get this... Uh, Let's get this painting done and see what we can do with this. First of all, a cup of tea is very important. It's the most important part of any painting, isn't it? A cup of tea. Now, let me just fix my camcorder here a moment. It may move just very slightly, just while I'm swinging the screen around so I can see what you're, what you're seeing. Now, I have this on automatic um, exposure, so I'm hoping it stays nice and warm like this. Sometimes it goes very yellow, sometimes it goes very blue. Um, I did set it on the manual exposure, but it was very, very cold, very, very cold color in the video. So I have it set to automatic exposure, okay? I hope it doesn't spoil it too much, but let's see. Let's mix a nice green for this background here. And you can see there's bits of light and bits of dark. <coughs> so let's see what we can do with this. I'm going to keep it warm and go with black and yellow, okay? Um, I think black and yellow is a very warm green. Now we can add hints of cyanide to this as well. So let's just get more cadmium yellow. I did add plenty of turpentine to this as well. I'll take a hint of cyanide just to warm it again. Um, we have a very warm kind of a green. There's some bright greens in there as well, but there are also some very dark kind of greens. Now I'm just going to fill this background with this kind of a green here. I won't go too dark because they want the shadow of the hand to really show through so like maybe just on the sides i might put this dark green like this okay now it might look very very dark to you but it's not very very dark it's just a very dark kind of an olive green we could say now i'm going to dampen my brush and take just yellow on its own and i'm going to take a tiny amount of thalo blue now that's going to cool it ever so slightly okay and i'll take a hint of white in that so now i'm going to go into a more brighter kind of a green i did sketch the hand very very loosely okay and the butterfly as well bearing in mind that i'm going to be going over some of those lines with my paint so i just kind of it's just a reference really it's a good idea i think to put in just a loose kind of a reference and now just let's take a little bit of naples yellow and cadmium yellow um, and also what i will say is my canvas is very very dry it's a very dry canvas i haven't primed the canvas really um i just gave it a light rub with some pan sandpaper because i want it to kind of dry soak into the canvas i want it to soak right in and allow me to kind of create certain effects and mix the colours in a particular way. Now, let me just take some white with a little more blue. I want to go a little cooler just up around here. Okay. And just go around the butterfly very loosely there. And the reason for that is I want the orange of the butterfly to really, really bounce off of the light colour that light kind of bluey green it's not a bluey green it's a whitey bluey kind of a color up behind the butterfly 
I want those colours really to bounce. So I'm just softening them through like this. Let's take a bit more blue actually. I'm going to add a hint more blue over here on this side. So I like quite like that light bluey green that's up there. And I'm going to soften it just by going around in circles. Now you could use a blender brush or a fan brush or whatever you like to soften your colours together. I'm just going around in circles like this just for now, okay? Just soften that through there because the, the canvas is really soaking up this paint. It's really, really drying up this paint. Now, okay, I'm happy enough with that. So you can see now that I'm creating this nice background. Um, I'm trying to be subtle with the background. I don't want to be too rich, if you know what I mean. Uh, but I want to be, I want to try and be as subtle as I can. I'm going to take a little bit of mauve. I'm going to pop a bit of mauve because mauve with some green always looks very warm, doesn't it? So a tiny bit of mauve, just soften it in here and there. I just kind of picked up a tiny bit of crimson and mixed it in with the blue, the kind of bluey green that I had. And just pop a little bit of pink just around here and there. Um, I want to kind of create that sort of fuzzy look that you see in the painting, you know that fuzzy kind of background that you would see. I want to try and recreate some of that. Now, it's not going to be absolutely perfect, but I just want to create a nice soft background because the focus is on the hand and the butterfly. So I don't want people to get distracted by the background. So I'm focusing on just getting this background nice and fuzzy and everything mixing together. Now the advantage of course to having a very dry canvas like this is that you can create lovely effects with a very dry kind of a brush and you don't have to worry about it mixing too much into the colour underneath. You know what I mean? Uh, for example, if this was really, if, if this was primed really well, um, the paint would be very very wet underneath all of this and the colours would mix together very very quickly and it would be very difficult to kind of separate certain colors like you see what i'm doing here i'm kind of putting in this light patch of blue just around the butterfly and it's not mixing into the color underneath too much you see it's very kind of dry so that allows me then to control where i want to put the lights you see and i'm going to just soften it like that and what i can do then is i can use my fingers right and i can just rub them rub them out with my fingers you see creating a lovely kind of textured look on the canvas so that's why i kind of like using just a dry canvas on its own as well now if some of you are using the more expensive canvases they will be naturally well primed but some of the cheaper canvases which i use a lot just for tutorials and stuff like that um some of the cheaper ones are just primed very loosely and they have a cheap primer. So I prime them myself. Um, but I think it helps sometimes to have a dry kind of a canvas. Now, I'm going to dampen my brush, okay? And I want to just start warming some of the green. There's some really lovely warm greens in there. Um, some warm and cool greens. Let's say vibrant, okay? That's the word I'm looking for, vibrant. So I'll take some cadmium yellow with some phthalo blue. And I'm just going to pop some of those vibrant greens in here and there, okay. Again, I don't want to go too dark around here because, again, I want a very nice dark shadow on the underneath of that hand. So for that reason, I'm just keeping the greens light enough so that I can think, you see, I'm thinking forward. I want to have a nice dark shadow later so I'm leaving the darks out just down here okay just in by the hand now I'm going to soften this in here just to get it nice and soft and fuzzy again look around the little circles and give us a nice soft kind of a fuzzy background you can have a lot of fun with this look you can really go to town have a lot of fun I'm going to start getting some slightly richer greens over here. So some phthalo blue, some cadmium yellow. 
and they are very there are some very cool greens next to some very warm greens aren't there so i'm going to go with some phthalo blue cadmium yellow and a touch of black that's a nice cool green there now isn't it okay and let's just pop that in here and there a little bit from there so you can see now i've just been very very loose with my brush okay and i'll put a little hint of that in over here as well just like that now i'm going to soften all of this around with my finger look just kind of flick it around and push it around on your canvas get nice and light get nice or nice and loose rather just really soften it in here and there who needs a palette knife huh? who needs a palette knife or a blender brush you can just use the tip of your finger sometimes it's the best tool in the box the tip of your finger or a bit of cloth or a bit of plastic or something like that you know let's just really have a bit of fun with this now how was that okay let me soften out this piece here just a little bit and i'm going to go really dark now around the sides okay so i'm going to take some um black lots of black and lots of yellow and plenty of blue as well I'm going to go up around here, get nice and dark. All right, then I'm going to soften it again. You see, I'm going to rub my finger through it, just soften out the edges just a little. All right, now. Clean the finger on a bit of tissue and let's go over to this side and try it. I'll take a little bit more blue in that actually. Okay, and bring a piece through here and soften it in like that. Um, I see actually a bit of burnt umber as well up in the top left corner. It's like bits of twigs and branches and stuff like that, you know what I mean? But it might be nice just to pop a little bit of it through. Let's take a little burnt umber and some yellow. And let's pop a little bit of burnt umber in there just to warm the painting. It just gives that little bit of warmth in the painting, I think. Okay, and perhaps a little tint of it there. And complement it then just by putting a little hint of it over here as well. Okay, just little touches and a soft little right through with our fingers again, very randomly. Now there, isn't that lovely? Now I'm going to go darker again. I want to go very dark. So phthalo blue and black on its own. Just right in at the corners, okay? And, okay, a little bit over here. I want that real strong shadow depth of depth right down in the corners, look. Okay, and disappearing up out of the painting. And remember, I'm keeping it nice and light in under the, the, the hand here, okay? I want to keep that. I want to keep that nice and light. So there. Now, how is that now for a nice simple background? Do you think? I don't think that's too bad at all. I might add a hint of warmth just with another dry brush, okay? A small, flat, dry brush. Synthetic. Just taking a tiny hint of cadmium yellow on its own. It already has a hint of green on it. So a tiny hint of cadmium yellow and just popping a little flick here and there of just that yellow just to give some light just here and there. Look, not too much, just a hint of it in the painting. Soften it in again. And let me pop a little hint of it up there. And again, I'm going to clean this brush just very quickly and I'm then going to add a little more of that light color so some phthalo blue some white 
plenty of white and a hint of crimson just a hint and I'm going to pop that color in right up around that butterfly okay and what will happen then is the dark lines on the butterfly will really give a beautiful silhouette in the painting so nice and loose look just it just kind of pops through here and there doesn't it it's very very random like it's just very very random a little bit under there and then again look we soften everything back out with our finger tip and fix this here now okay now that's quite nice isn't it we could maybe go further with some of that a bit of white there Oh, well, there we are. I think that's, I think that's all right. That's not bad now at all, is it? Okay, we're on to our hand. Because I want to save the butterfly to last. I want to save the best until last. And the hand, I'm going to take a nice flat brush, okay? First of all, a nice sip of tea. And the dryness of the canvas has really helped now because I can really cut into the canvas here and get a nice clean, fresh kind of a line. You know what I mean? So for this hand, um, looking at the colours, let's think about it. I can see burnt cyanide, I can see Naples yellow, white, I can see a little red and some dark blacky brown as well. So let's start with the light colour perhaps. Okay, let's go with some Naples yellow, a hint of burnt cyanide, and I'm going to go with lots of white, okay? Let's just try this and see what happens. Now, I start with this finger here. Okay, now there may even be a hint of crimson in this because for a skin color, you would want a hint of crimson, I would imagine. Okay, I may be wrong now, I'm not a portrait artist at all. But I do know for a hint of skin colour, a hint of pink really helps. Um, another little hint of pink. I'm using tiny amounts now, okay? Tiny, tiny little amounts of colour in my mix. Um, let's go down here like this. Fill in this one here. I'm only going halfway, you see, because the rest of this line is going to be in shadow. So I drew a line where the shadow starts, okay? the very dark shadow I'll take some white with some Naples yellow and I'll cut across here like that okay and these are not the brightest highlights I will be doing much much brighter highlights later on um, I'll take another hint of cyanide I'm just going to fill in some of this here Okay, I fix some of the lines. Um, it's difficult enough to kind of paint hands because you'll see there's a bit of a curve in each one. So there's a very slight curve in each one. Now some Naples yellow, white, hint of crimson again. And I'll do the thumb way over here. And don't worry now if your brush is kind of picking up um, if your brush is picking up some of the green don't worry about that at all okay because we're going to be adding to this and adding to it so not to worry And I'm just focusing on getting the, just the shape right, I suppose, for the time being. 
and I'll worry about shadows later on. So let me get this line in here. There we go. And we'll get detail in just a moment. We'll start putting some slight little hints of detail in. Now let me take some crimson and some burnt umber. And what I'm going to do is start adding some shadows to some of these. A hint of burnt cyanide maybe. And we just start creating some of the shadow along some of these. There we go. Now a hint of top turpentine just to dampen it very slightly. Let's take some burnt umber and let's start adding some burnt umber over here. And I'm going to just start softening up into that yellow while it's still wet, okay? I'm going to soften my finger even, look. There we go. And another little bit across here. I'm going to start hitting this with some cadmium red because I can see a hint of warm colour going right along there, can't you? There's a hint of warm colour and I'm going to soften it then very slightly with a nice soft brush. Let me find a nice soft brush here now. Um, I'll try this one. Soften that up into the lighter colour. There we go. Oh, that's not looking too bad so far, is it? It doesn't look like a hand, but we're getting there. And I'm going to have a little hint of shadow over here, and then a little tiny curve like that, and soften those together, you see? And another one around the back here. Then another small line coming down like that. And these are very subtle, really very, very subtle little changes. That's all, okay? Very small, subtle changes. Um, I'm going to... There's another line around here, so I'm just going to go up and create some of those lines using the shadow of the skin. Okay. And this one... I'm going to sort of soften out just slightly and it's quite difficult to kind of use the paint to create the drawing of the hand so it's about moving the paint around and creating certain shapes on the hand now Let's go and get some real darks. Some burnt umber, some black and some crimson. And I'm gonna go with some real dark colors along under here. Plenty of crimson. Down here like this. Now, that dark color carries on up into this finger. So I'm going to carry it on. Add a bit of burnt umber with some cadmium red. And let's get some nice warm color in this finger here, which is in shadow. They almost kind of soften together slightly, don't they? In certain places. I'm going to just kind of pull them up and soften them upwards. And I'm probably completely wrong here now, but I'm giving it a good go anyway. A good, good go.
and I'm going to be using the lights in a minute to create more kind of definition in the hand and the fingertips so not to worry now let me just add a little light in here in fact I see kind of an orangey color I'm going to take some cadmium yellow and a little hint of red with some white a little more red See, it's quite tricky, isn't it? I think it's about getting the colours right more than anything else. Um, let's add a little bit of that colour around here. It's a very vibrant colour, isn't it? It's a lovely colour, actually. Okay, and let's come down here. You can see some of that colour all the way through. Soften it downwards very slightly with your fingertip. Okay, now we have also a hint of warm colour in under there. Let me get some nice, I want some nice warm colour for that. Cadmium red and cyanide. Now the problem we have is trying to separate um, colours. I'm going to switch to a small round brush, okay? I'm going to dampen that and I'm going to start getting some really bright colours now. I'm going to start going with some Naples yellow and white. And I may add a hint of cadmium yellow into that. And that will really brighten it up, but not too much yellow, okay? Um, only a hint of cadmium yellow. It's a very soft pastel kind of a colour. So I'm going to go now and there's a very bright colour along here. Okay. So it's separating the thumb then you see from the hand. Understand? Now let me take a hint of cadmium red. I just want to soften that colour slightly. It's very bright. And I'll go up here now and I'm going to just define the finger just a little more around here and I'm going to you see in between each part of the finger there's a very kind of um, a subtle light coming around so I can see a very subtle light kind of coming around in between each part I'm just going to kind of soften that down then very gently. Let me use a nice soft dry brush. Soften that around. And then out here I have a nice bright colour hitting that. Okay. It's quite tricky, isn't it? You think, looking at it, it seems like just a very, very simple subject, um, but it is actually quite tricky. There's one, two. We have another little one around here. Okay. And another slight one here. very subtle light on this one here and we have a very subtle light along the palm here you'd never think it was so difficult to paint something so simple like the palm of a hand you know uh, some people love this kind of stuff I tend to shy away from this kind of thing because to be honest I'm just not very very good at it so I tend to kind of shy away a little. Um, but there's no harm in admitting that you're not good at one particular aspect of painting because we all can't be perfect at everything in painting, okay? But it's nice to try these things from time to time. Um, now, I'm going to just kind of soften some of these out first, right? And then I'm going to just take a detail brush and 
try and get some little bit of detail here and there okay just a few I'm going to take a hint of white actually and I'm going to pop a little white there's a very bright color on the pan just around here okay now let's take a small brush I'm going to go over some of that dark browny red color and I'm just going to start popping um, let's start with this finger here so I'm going to go here and pop a little tiny little impression that part of the finger there we have another tiny one just coming along here okay just to suggest the little dark sections between the finger part of the finger just a couple and then we have another one uh, that kind of comes around here doesn't it Okay, a little dark up there, just to separate the finger from the rest of the hand. I'm going to darken one or two of these over here. They're hardly even visible now over there, but I think just to try and give an impression of them would be nice. Alright, um, coming down, suggest some bits of the cracked skin here and there. Now, I want to get nice and dark in around here. So we have some very dark colour. I'm going to go with some burnt umber for now in here, okay? So this very small little finger that we have is going to be dark. I'm going to soften it upwards slightly. Then I'll take more of that burnt umber and I'm going to come down here and create this dark. Then I'm going to soften this. I'll take a hint of cadmium red actually. And I'm going to turn that one. Okay, it gets slightly darker. And then I'm going to gently soften it. Now I will add some more brighter colours in a moment, okay? Don't worry. Um, I'm going to come down here, get really dark with this. I'm take some black and I'm going to put some nice rich dark black colour. These almost uh, merge together, don't they? At the bottoms anyway, they do kind of merge together, they almost just disappear in together. So just black on its own. And it comes right up, doesn't it, to black. I'm going to switch brushes. Okay. Because I want to get this nice, I really do. I and mean, I'm almost, I suppose, dare I say, struggling just a little bit um, I could probably do with leaving it dry and adding some glazes and what I mean by glazes is letting this dry and then putting a very thin wash of black and red over the shadowed areas that's what a glaze is so putting a very thin wash over something um, so you know, it could benefit from doing, from doing that as well cadmium red now Cadmium red always warms things up, doesn't it? Let's warm it up down here. 
Now, I'm going to take some cadmium red, and I'm going to put some cadmium red along here, okay, like this, and I'm going to put some cadmium red along here, like this as well. Now, I'm going to clean my brush, take some cadmium red with cadmium yellow, and I'm going to put some of that rich colour just around the tips of some of these fingers here and along the middle of this one that then I'm going to just use the finger, tip of my finger and I'm going to soften the warm colour up first okay so warm around here soften it down and down into the black then look soften it down into the black it's a little tricky but look you can try different brushes and whatnot you know you can try just to have a bit of fun with it you know now I'm going to get more black now and there Okay, how is this coming on? It's not too bad now, is it? What recording time have I left? I have 39 minutes left on my camcorder. I'm recording in the highest possible quality on my camcorder at the moment. So it's using a lot of memory, but I want to give you a really good picture. You know what I mean? Now, Doesn't look much like a finger, but what harm? Let's uh, let's crack on. We'll we'll get there. In fact, look, I'll move to my smaller brush, and I'll get some highlights. Take some Naples yellow and titanium white. Let's lighten some parts of this again. Okay, let's go along the tip of this. Uh, let's go along here. And let's come out there like that. And let's pop a little light in up here. Um, okay, I'll put more light around this finger here. Definitely lighter on that fingertip. Okay, and a little light perhaps just in here. Soften it across. Mm, okay, and I'll take another little bit of light colour and put it around here so it's quite tricky isn't it well for me it's probably not tricky for a lot of people out there, but I find it quite tricky to get things just the right shape. I really do, I have to say. Take a little bit of white, and I'm just going to pop a little of that thick white highlight just around here and there. Especially on this edge over here. Um, I'm going to take a little darker colour now and just follow some of the darker lines 
so that I can see a subtle kind of a dark line coming along and it disappears let's move on to our butterfly let's see if we can improve the butterfly just a little um, I'm just going to first take some very rich orange pop a little bit of that in here and then a little bit of cadmium red in at the tips who would have thought painting a little palm of a hand would have been so tricky you know who would have thought certainly not me okay butterfly time let's get some black should i do the black first or should i do the orange i think i'll do the black first let's just do the blacks around and drop me to zoom in slightly or will i leave it um uh, yeah i leave it i think okay some black watery black paint and let's just go down like that okay and it goes around like this back in okay then it comes around i'm going to leave some of that very thin line there then we have a little flick like so then this one it comes in like this now i'm just going to fill in the actual butterfly's body with just some burnt umber you don't have to be fussy with this some burnt umber and just look a little bit of black thin on the inside it's just to give the impression of the butterfly okay we can put one of its little tentacles out like that you see now moving on to our other round brush our slightly larger round brush and i'm going to mix a very vibrant orange now for this well i'll try i'll do my best i'm going to take lots of cadmium yellow and lots of cadmium red and i'm going to mix those together with a little bit of turpentine to help just to help break the paint that's what the turpentine does it just kind of breaks the paint and let's go up now and have a look at this now i'll go with that as a base color i can add more lights to this in a moment i'm going to just fill in all of this butterfly with this color okay just do this for now so i always kind of choose a medium sort of a shade to do all the filling in and then i add lights and i add dark then to that um i find that much easier than raw rather than trying to mix each color individually and put it on the canvas i just find this much much more it's, it's much easier to do And we have a little bit then coming out at the bottom here yes so now we have the base the basics of our butterfly i'm going to get more cadmium yellow from my palette or from my tube rather and i'm going to then with this brush cleaned the same brush take some cadmium yellow i'm simply going to mix that in neat to the paint that i have already there and that should help then give us a nice light you see soften it very gently into that orange clean it if it gets dirty and then pick up more again and we have a nice bright shade around here okay just kind of soften it along it doesn't have to be completely softened in either all right um, I'm going to put some around here, soften that in, 
and okay a bit more here and once I have that lightened to where I want it I can then kind of mix in a little bit of white with yellow to really show some bright colors do you understand what I mean um, so let's see now I have that that's fairly nice so what I'll do now is I'll take some cadmium yellow pale with some white and then I'm going to really put in some brights so there's a bit there there's kind of a little bit of bright softening down here and we have a very nice bright right along the center here don't we which we can soften you see and we have a couple coming along like that I'm not even thinking about the black lines now in this okay at this stage I'm just looking at the color and the direction of the colors going through the wings and put one or two down here and then we have a really bright one just kind of up at the edges up here don't we around there okay put that down and let's go back to our small brush and take some black with lots of turpentine pure black with lots of turpentine and let's just define then some of these edges and now we can really go to town and paint in the proper lines in the butterfly you see so let's go along here like that um, this is very dark here isn't it a lot of dark there and then it kind of curls around and comes down here then we have it's like a double layer okay that goes along like that and then we have a few lines that kind of come down like that so now we have our lovely rich colors then in between you see um, okay I'm not too concerned about too much detail and I have a nice thick line then going around here let's get that one in there um, nice another thick one a little bit of a wiggle I can see then we have some nice thick lines going down into the body of the wings down here and um, we have another one coming out like that and then down then we have one that comes up like this and it turns and comes down again and look it may not be perfect it doesn't have to be perfect you can make your completely your own designs with this if you like it's entirely up to yourself you can do what you want it's your painting okay um, now where the wings overlap there's a slight kind of a darkness in the color isn't there let's take a hint of crimson in this there's a slight darkness in color where the wings are overlapping you see that I'm thinking just like that and then maybe a hint of burnt umber just along like so and then I'll take some black and I will go around then again the outside of that wing create a nice curve okay now I see lovely white little specks on the edges of those so just a couple of white little specks okay 
You don't have to be completely perfect now with all of this. Just a few little dabs here and there. All right. Like that. And there may even be one or two coming down into this as well just to separate that and then what I'm going to do is with my slightly bigger brush I'm going to take some nice warmer colours perhaps some cadmium yellow, rich cadmium yellow and in between some of those just pop a little bit of that nice warm colour rich bright colour so for example up here and that will help just kind of separate the sections just slightly you know what I mean? of course you do And it'll just give that hint of vibrancy to it. And look, even on the fingers as well under here, I'm going to put some of that colour in under there, okay? And there's even a hint of orangey red on the body of the butterfly as well, because it's really warm colours showing through. Now, how is that? Look at that. Isn't that wonderful? I think I call that finished my friends. I think that's turned out really lovely. I might do a bit of work on the hand yet, but look, I mean, for what it is, I think it turned out absolutely lovely. And there we are. A lovely butterfly on a hand. Isn't that wonderful? I'm very happy with how that turned out. Just fixed this here. Thank you so much for watching. Um, have a fantastic Christmas and a wonderful new year. Thank you for subscribing if you have. Um, if you haven't, subscribe. You're missing so much. Um, God bless you all and thank you so much for your support. You really have, you inspire me. You really do. Um, so thank you so much. Happy painting. Uh, if you have any questions, please just email me. Uh, Stephen Conway art at gmail.com um, any questions whatsoever I would be happy to help okay um, I'll see you later in the new year happy new year everyone and uh, God bless you all <laughs>